if we'd followed the rules of the industry, the rules of the market, Rafa wouldn't exist. And there would be no premium cycling apparel of the sort that we make. There would be no international cycling club and clubhouses. There would be none of the innovations we've made around product. The idea that you can't do something or it'll never work, I heard so many times when trying to raise money for this business. Cycling can't be an aspirational sport. Cycling's for people who can't afford to drive a car. <laughs> Outside is free. <laughs> you could never create a successful brand in cycling. Reasons why you couldn't do things, and yet cycling is all about pushing yourself to do more. I can't go on, I must go on, I will go on. That's what the cyclist says to himself, and that's what the innovator says to themselves as well. The sport's amazing. Actually, what they do, how they do it, the history, the culture. Incredible, aesthetic, amazing stories. So there's this huge wellspring of ideas that no one was talking about. Nobody had applied that to clothing, and nobody had pulled that together to turn it into something that really reflected how amazing the sport was and bring that to more people. And that's why Rafa was born. So for the first three or four years, there were only a handful of people at Rafa, and we had the market to ourselves for quite a long time. Because we only sell direct, you can only buy Rafa from Rafa, we can have this direct conversation without worrying about anybody else. We don't have to worry about anybody in this business apart from doing the right thing for the sport and for our customers. That's incredibly liberating. I think the reason it doesn't feel like a big corporation is that it's not a group of people sitting in a head office pressing buttons on machines to make things happen. It's a group of 350 passionate people that we've pulled together. And lots of those people are out on the ground. So we have people in clubhouses, we have people in local markets, and then we have a whole network of ambassadors throughout the world. I think that keeps it much, much more intimate and much more relevant. I think that's what it is. It's a different way of building a business. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a business. It's not there just to sort of move things on a board game. It's about being on the ground, living it. Everybody who works at Rafa really understands why we exist. There is a sense of mission about what we're doing, and everyone gets that. Nothing is too small, nothing is insignificant. All of it has to be thought through, and all of it has to be made as good as it can be for cycling. From day one, we've, we've worked with fantastic photographers and we've created more than 300 films over the years. And what we've been able to do is we, we've had the freedom to not make commercials. We're fortunate we work with a number of amazing designers from different fields, whether that's fashion or architecture or it's furniture design. Working with people like Paul Smith or Norman Foster or Herman Miller, we bring total passion for cycling and total knowledge about cycling, and they bring something very different. When you put those two things together, you can make cycling more than it is, and we can infuse cycling into other areas of life. The way cycling's perceived has changed massively in 12 years since we launched. And I think we've been a big part of that. And it's more relevant than it's ever been to everybody's lives. We talk about Rafa being about something and we have a big why behind the business. It's not just something which 
feels good and looks good and performs well. It's an experience, it's a transformational experience that makes people's lives better when they really get into it. That's an incredible thing to be trying to, to push, trying to build. That's an amazing why to have. Yeah, we've got the best why in the world, so there's so much more we can, we can do with that. <laughs>